These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. I hate this channel. Hey there, I'm Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and let me be the first to say, yeah, the title of this video is a little misleading. Just, just a little bit. Just uh, hear me out. Hold on for a second. So yes, Shawn Michaels never actually competed in WCW. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso. Stop. Okay. Shawn Michaels never actually competed in WCW. But, did you know that there was a point in time where he really, really wanted to? Back in the mid to late 90s, the WWF locker room and the wrestling world as a whole was being dominated by a group of future Hall of Famers, a group known as The Click. It was a team which consisted of names such as Shawn Michaels, Diesel, Razor Ramon, Triple H, and the 123 Kid. All prominent names in the industry at the time. And even now, really, come to think of it. They were dominating the card, winning titles, main eventing pay-per-views, and essentially etching their name in the WWF history books. Not to mention the paydays. All the paydays. The group was inseparable, both on and off screen. As off screen, they were a pack, and on screen, they were constantly interacting with each other in some form or another, whether that meant the occasional team up or storyline rivalries. Fast forward to just a year later and all of that seemed to change. Diesel, Razor, and Kid had left the WWF for the WCW, where they took part in the company's most famous angle, the NWO. I think we might have talked about that a couple times in this channel. Don't, don't quote me. I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty sure we might have. During 1997, the WCW and the WWF were in a fierce feud over Monday Night Ratings. It's a real-life rivalry that has since been dubbed the Monday Night Wars. Michael's friends left him and were continuing to solidify their rising star power. And while he was still flourishing as the WWF champion, he wasn't exactly living up to the hype, as the WCW were killing it in the ratings. Now, whether fair or not, the perception of failing ratings often falls on the shoulders of whoever's champion at the time, which I'm sure weighed heavily on Shawn Michaels' conscience or lack thereof. I mean, going out there every night, stealing the show, and still being told that what you're doing isn't good enough, I mean, that that's really gotta suck. I mean, just think of how Dolph Ziggler must feel. What's more embarrassing to me is working your whole career, given everything you got, being known as a second-rate Shawn Michaels wannabe. Oh, super kick! The company combat was felt by everyone at the time, those watching the shows, the guys working those shows, and those especially in the office backstage. Vince McMahon typically the self-assured egomaniac's confidence took a big hit with the loss of two of his top stars in Diesel and Razor. The worst part of it all was that the growing company didn't stop there. They continually expressed interest in other WWF employees at the time. Namely one, Bret the Hitman Hart. You see, Bret Hart was every bit the star that the Click members were. He was a decorated champion with an outstanding resume, phenomenal in-ring skills, and a connection to the wrestling audience that many others didn't have. In an act of sheer desperation, Vince attempted to put a stop to Brett's talks with the rival promotion by signing him to an unprecedented, yes, I know, I pronounce that weird, I'm from New York, what do you want from me? An unprecedented 20-year contract. And why I'm mentioning this is because most wrestling fans are aware that Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels had a long history of well-documented issues with each other. That maybe, definitely, we'll cover someday on this channel. And the reason I bring this up is that those issues play a primary part in the story. You see, Shawn and Bret were heated rivals both in front of the cameras and behind them as well. They were two of the main event stars in the company at the time and were constantly fighting for that number one spot. They were both top guys, but each wanted to be the guy. So with the real life tension only growing behind the scenes, and Sean hearing that Brett wouldn't be going anywhere for at least two decades, he wanted out of his WWF contract. So this way he could head over to WCW, 
probably make more money, and spend time with his buddies. I mean, who doesn't want to work less for more? The worst part of it all may be that on camera, Sean purposely displayed his lack of enthusiasm with the product at the time, and showcased his desire to work elsewhere. He and his fellow Click members would shout each other out on screen across the Monday Night Brands. Sean approached the boss and asked to be released from his contract, which he had about four to five years left on, and his request, unsurprisingly to us, but quite surprisingly to him, was denied. DENIED! Michaels figured that if he wanted out, McMahon, whom he had a close friendship of sorts with, would understand and respect his wishes. Allegedly, they'd even had a handshake deal that if Sean was ever unhappy, he could just up and leave. Unfortunately, that wasn't put in the fine print when he signed the contract, so Vince wasn't contractually obligated to do so. So now combine all that with a real-life fist fight with Bret Hart on an episode of Raw, and Michaels was, in his mind at least, officially done with the WWF. Sean went on to do what Sean did best at that point in time. Piss everyone he worked with off. Sean was always great in the ring on the mic, and as a character, but as a man, Sean had always made everyone else's jobs a little bit harder. Sean, for all intents and purposes, was a pain in the ass. And he didn't really care who knew it. He wasn't really, wasn't really the shy type. When he didn't get his way, he made sure no one else did either. Michaels would go on to no-show several appearances at events that he was scheduled to work and even went so far as to disconnect his phone so that his employer couldn't get in contact with him. I like that Sean's way of handling his relationship with Vince was to treat him like a crazy ex-girlfriend. I mean, really, the next step for Sean was to get a restraining order from his boss, and then to really, really drive the point home that he was taking his ball and leaving, Sean Michaels did a photo shoot for Pro Wrestling Illustrated, wearing what else? but an outsider's t-shirt. And sure, you could rack this up to Sean trying to show support of his friends Hall and Nash, but this wasn't the time or place. And I think, I mean, don't quote me here, but I'm pretty sure that Shawn Michaels was the active WWF champion at the time. So it's especially a bad look on the company. I mean, just imagine AJ Styles not attending house shows and showing up for a photo op wearing a Kenny Omega shirt. This was surprising to say the least. Sean's goal was to try and goat Vince into firing him, and while he didn't get what he wanted, he did at least get Vince's attention, causing the WWF to have legal papers sent to his house, remember, phone disconnected, can't call him, have legal papers sent to his house because he was clearly in breach of his contract. So Sean, not wanting to pay out his ass the rest of his life, gritted his teeth and returned to the company. Speaking on the situation years later with Jim Ross on the Ross Report, Sean stated the following. Did you ever consider going to WCW? Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought about it. And, you know, at that time, I'm under contract by the WWE, so you, you, couldn't, you couldn't go. But there was a time I, I did want to go. I mean, I did. I went to Vince, and I said, just let me go. You know, I'm miserable here. I can't stand it here anymore. I want to go down and be with my buddies. Let me go. And he just said, no. I, I couldn't have gone. I was under contract. And he said, look, you're a creative guy. You want to do, you know, your things your way. You, you know, when you get a chance to have your matches or be creative, whatever, you, that's what you thrive on. And they won't let you do that down there. And that's going to kill you. You'll never be able to make it in that kind of environment. He said, so even if I, you know, even if I was going to let you, you know, I, you know, you wouldn't like it down there. I'm telling you. You know what? Maybe he's got a point. I think he might have had some validity there. I don't. Sean, I got to disagree with you there, buddy. WCW is infamously synonymous with the phrase, letting the inmates run the asylum. That, that's been hammered into everybody's heads. It's been spoken many a times that the WCW wrestlers, uh, especially their top stars, a lot of them not only got huge payouts, not, not, not only were, were paid a massive sum, but were also given a sense of creative control over their characters in their contracts. I think you undoubtedly, especially being the star that you were at the time, would have been given a hell of a lot more creative control and contractual freedom. But hey, I mean, it, it worked out for you in the long run. I'm just saying. Look, all I'm saying is that there's no validity in you saying that there's validity in what Vince said. I hope that's not too hard to understand. He also brought the subject back up on the Ric Flair show with... Who else but Ric Flair? Where this time he said... You were kind of the guy who never went to WCW despite all your buddies going. Did any serious talks ever happen about you going to WCW? Or I think I've always felt like, you know, uh, 
I, I was a, a WWE guy. It's one of those things where yeah, I guess you talk about your fans, but really legally and contractually, no. Something has you know had to be bigger and more important than the money. Um, and for me, it was that time inside that ring, the place that I felt like you know had the most freedom. And I honestly didn't want to be anywhere else. And the only reason you'd ever go anywhere else is for money. I'm going to cut it off right there real quick. Because, Sean, you could have fooled me. Now it just seems like you're trying to fool yourself. And, Sean, uh, <clears throat> if I could paraphrase here, uh, as a, a wise degenerate once said, I've got two words for you, Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome. Regardless, that was Sean's time, or lack thereof, in WCW. Don't forget to bitch me out in the comments section because Shawn Michaels was never in WCW and you clearly don't know what you're talking about. I look forward to reading them. I, I, I look forward to it. Well, let me tell you something, brother. You're watching the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso's channel, dude. So if you like the words that came out of his mouth hole and you too want to become a V-tard, don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon to get updates and notifications. Ooh, tell him what up, Mach. Ooh, yeah. Follow the man on Twitter, yeah, because we all know it's not stalking if it's on the internet, yeah. Join the madness by joining the Discord, and if you have a moment of time and a free dollar to spare, head over to the SIJW's Patreon, dig it, where you can request videos, get exclusive videos, and early access to content, yeah. Or go down to PayPal, where you can buy the shirts, brother. But most importantly, just remember, if you're not tuning in, then, then you're, you're missing, missing out. out.